It's a time capsule within a time capsule. This is the last bit of treasure that we have right now, which is unknown. Everything else from the treasure has gone, you know, through the full cycle of being curated and certified and packaged for a collector. These are the final piece that hasn't. The SS Central America moved vital shipments of gold that had arrived from California to the coast of Panama on to New York City. But on September 12, 1857, it sank during a hurricane off the coast of the Carolinas while carrying an enormous treasure of gold bars and coins. When gold was discovered in California, you had this mass migration of men to California, the, the famous 49ers. Uh, the fastest way to, and safest way to get to California was actually through the Isthmus of Panama. So the Panama route was literally the arteries through which all of that wealth flowed into the U.S. economy and ultimately the world economy as well. When news of the disaster reached New York City, panic struck. U.S. banks were counting on the ship's commercial gold supply from the California gold rush, but the ship of gold sinking only made matters worse, setting off the panic of 1857. Uh, it just went to deepen the gloom of the day, and there were runs on the banks, and it really became quite a depression uh, for the next couple of years. Over 130 years later, Bob Evans, chief scientist of the SS Central America's recovery efforts, would be instrumental in locating artifacts from the legendary ship. There was a shadow in the, in the sonar that told me that, whoa, better watch out. It was the Central America. We picked up a bottle to test our technology out in the debris field, and I searched it the next morning, and that's when I saw the first fleck of gold dust. After the long journey and discovery, the next challenge would be figuring out how to get the gold to the surface. Evans says the crew came up with a clever way to retrieve some of the harder to reach items. I found Mike, the chief engineer, uh, building an aluminum spatula, kind of like a kind of like a pizza shovel. The idea being that he could slide this under one of the boxes, pick it up, land it onto a a tray with a handle on it then, pick up that tray and, and put it in the drawer and bring it to the surface. It was a wonderful plan, uh, not least of, I mean, it worked. It was a great idea. And so we recovered this uh, box of coins. This box contains the last great mystery of the SS Central America, untouched since 1857. Dwight Manley, as managing partner of the California Gold Marketing Group, made the world's largest numismatic purchase, acquiring the famous ship's treasure. He entrusted NGC to grade the first coins recovered, and now last. The very first two coins were graded by NGC. It's a big deal having the very first and the very final coins graded from the Central America. To me, it seemed the right thing to do to say, okay, we're closing the, the, the book on the treasure from the Central America. Before Mark and the NGC graders can get the chance to lay their eyes on the latest SS Central America treasure, Bob and Dwight will need to physically detach the coins from the box. I will take the uh, individual coins out of this box, and then I will put them into solution where they will fully demineralize from their now partially demineralized state. We will get the rest of those minerals off of these coins and they will be revealed to be exactly the way they looked in 1857. This one, I mean, it just looks like a 67 proof like. It's just a, it looks like it's the finest. At this point, it just looks like that's an amazing coin. No bag marks, no nothing, just like it fell into your hand from the mint. Holy cow. Dwight, this has got 12 inch mirrors on that reverse. Yeah, that's a deep proof. Like Look at it? that. But they're just frosted cameos. Mark's going to be very excited when he gets these in the shipment. 
was interesting to me that you see that many proof likes from the same dye variety as we were taking them apart. And that to me kind of means that somebody who was packing this box already had a stack of proof like coins and he sits there and he goes, okay, I've got 10 coins, I've got, you know, however many, and he was like putting them in the stacks as groups of those. The final number of coins, 123. Now conserved, the SS Central America rarities head to NGC in Sarasota, Florida. This one is this mirrored freak that I've never seen. I've never seen a 20 that has this kind of flash and color and depth of mirror. This is a prize. I mean, this is, I've seen a lot of 57S's. <laughs> it's like finding an elephant with like three tusks. It's like, it just doesn't make any sense. It's just, it's very, very, very rare. This may be the finest one I've, I've found. And it happens to be, this is a, this is, this is a Mac Daddy right here. So, um, it's, it's just sick. So the combination of the, the quality of the surface, the quality of the coins, the way they were found, how they were brought back up, how they were held for the last 30 years together, and then the wood impression, all of that together here today. I mean, it's a once in a lifetime kind of an event. And those are only the first few coins that Mark evaluated. Well, obviously they're very, very fresh. We're looking for the, the typical process of, you know, is it new? And most of these are gonna be not only new, but gem. Um, so we're looking at that. Is there any kind of staining? Is there any kind of scratches or, or marks in a particular area? Uh, and in general, um, identifying the depth of the mirror. Some of these coins are fresh off the die. So these dies were made, then they polished the die, and the first coins off a die usually have a mirror around the device. The device is anything that's popped out. And those are highly prized because they're the freshest coins off a die. And they have a really dramatic cameo effect. People love that. So we designate PL proof-like, which is um, coins that are proof were made specially for collectors um, on highly polished dies. But these are not proofs, but they're proof-like. So they have some of them. Uh, from what I, I can gather, um, and those are those are just a very special characteristic that you know we'll look for. Uh, obviously, the grades highly important, um, but uh, you know there could be some finest knowns in here we don't know yet. But Mark and the NGC graders soon did find out the highest graded examples of SS Central America coins are in fact part of this treasure box. Four coins were graded NGC MS67+. One coin was graded NGC MS67 Proof-like, the finest known Proof-like example. And finally, one coin was graded NGC MS67 Star, the highest graded NGC Star designated 1857S Double Eagle. It's a thrilling reveal involving one of the SS Central America's last mysteries. I learned something new about this ship and this shipwreck every year. This is a tremendous opportunity to bookend the discovery process with regard to the treasures. It's the greatest treasure ever found in American history. It's the greatest treasure ever lost in American history. It's from a magical period in American history, the gold rush, the authentic United States gold rush, the best, biggest one in history. You're talking about the end of a great, great story. I think it kind of, for lack of a better term, encapsulates the whole shipwreck because it's the wood, the impression from the coins on the wood that they've been together since the first dive. The actual grading process and what we did has been immensely successful. The values of the coins, the, the appreciation for the coins has been fantastic. This is a culmination of, um, you know, Dwight finding this thing and, and putting it all together with Bob Evans. It's a world-renowned collection, and to have it come here at the end of the final grouping is just fantastic.